this is zero no. Misunderstanding, you were looking for us to hero uh. Save you from that salary rap, fancy your ear yeah. Filter knowledge, frequency bullshit, her clear Self-absorbance when he reflects uh. Eternally to see his return, this is a blessing yeah. Soaking up what's easily read, stuck in your head uh. Looping for 30 seconds, we living now what it says What up y'all, Nightlife, this is What The Podcast And I'm joined by comedian extraordinaire D-Rock What up man? What's up with y'all? How y'all doing? My hair look crazy, but what's up with y'all? Hey, man, and we got uh, producer extraordinaire Sandman. What it did to do. And then we got our uh, one of our guest hosts today. First time we done had a guest host on here besides the D- DP uh, ran in a week. Yeah. It's the homie Tiz. Woo, woo. Hey, what's up, y'all, man? I'm just sitting here chilling, man. I'm trying to do what it do, man. All right, so... Um, I was going to ask uh, how you gentlemen doing, but that's going to take like 20 minutes, so I don't feel like doing all that shit. Um, I'm doing well, thank you for asking. This guy's rude. I'm getting some, I'm getting some, uh, some feedback on you, man. You getting feedback on me? Yeah, it's, it's sounding like, it's sounding crunchy. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's what it sounds like. It do, though, man. You, you sound real robotic right now. Mm-hmm. Y'all sound robotic. <laughs> thank, thank God for editing. So you got nothing else to say. Y'all sound robotic. <laughs> are you are you cool now? I don't know. Am I cool? Yeah, I guess. I mean, you just can't get amped up because if you get amped up, it's it's sounding real sketchy, man. I think. Anyhow. All right, y'all. So basically, man, I'm tired of summer. I'm tired of this shit. Somebody needs to turn the sun off. It's too goddamn hot. Like you shouldn't have to. Real old right now. Just I, man, it's, hot. it's too hot. It's too hot. <laughs> it's too old shit. right now. Uh, it's hot. Be honest though. That's right though. It is hella hot though. I ain't gonna lie. Button, I'm tired my outside. <laughs> my buddy is hurt. I'm tired of these kids running running around. <laughs> I'm coming in. I'm coming in here, man. To try to record and do all of these podcasts and shit, and up here sweating like I'm on roots. It's like, man, nah, I don't, I don't need, I don't need that, I don't need that right now. It's too, <laughs> too fucking hot. It's gonna be one. It's gonna be 106 and 107 this weekend, man. Yeah, that, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's not even right hot. Is what that is. Nah, you, <laughs> your, that's that hot where your underarms don't even sweat. That's a hot. You cut speak a lot. Just cause <laughs> the littlest things piss you off for real. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. How you doing today? I'm fine. How you doing? Oh, you just gonna open the microwave when it beep, huh? Trying to get burrito. Oh my god! You're getting it. You're getting that serious, was funny. serious arguments over some bullshit because it's too fucking hot outside. Right. Amen. So, y'all heard the news. Uh, we have a VP that has stepped up and had wanted to run with Biden, Kamala Harris. Any thoughts on that, gentlemen? Plenty. Hey, I'm right. just go right ahead. Hey, let me just let me just say, hey, let me just say, I'm glad you got her name right though, man, because they've been mispronouncing my shorty's junk, calling her Kamala for every day. Though. Kamala Harris. <laughs> That's campaign strategy. You, what's what's hey. ill? What's ill is that the wrestler Kamala, the Ugandan headhunter, and his last his last name is Harris, oh, died really? died this week. Oh, that's crazy! And I then about that. and then Kamala and then you know then Kamala Harris gets the nominee the the nominee nod. So that was yeah. that was pretty that's pretty odd. I'm really? probably the only one that made that. I'm a wrestling head, so I'm probably the only one that made that like moment of symmetry right there. I mean, not like it really fucking matters, but still, I just thought it was pretty interesting. And so I'm gonna touch on this. I'm gonna get off. Are you still on wrestling? Current yes. present day. A- absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm not. You know, the state of wrestling right now is it's gone. <laughs> it's, yeah, I've been it's done. So <laughs> right now, man. Like without the fans, it feels like I feel like they're getting more cinematic with stuff. But without the fans, it feels like something totally different. You know what I'm that's saying? What, that's what any sport right now, though, you got to survive. 
And yeah. they gotta they gotta still be able to try to make some money, man. They can't just quit. So I don't I don't blame them for doing what they're doing. It's just a rough time, and we're gonna have to get through it. But you know, I think they try to be as entertaining as they can. But yeah, you know, it just gotta be able to hold your attention because you know a couple of clotheslines and flips ain't gonna really get you to get you to stay there. They really need to some character development. And motherfuckers need to start talking shit like the Rock used to. I don't know, man. Once you know it's fake, it just, it fucks it up for me. I can't watch it compared to before, like back in the day. They used to. It felt like it was real. They used to really hit them with them chairs. Like it just felt more realistic <laughs> compared to now. Now it seems like some pity pad hug. You know, lay you on the Not ground. Pity pad. Oh man, oh, pity pad. And what what white people call it? Fisticuffs. They fisticuffing no. up there. You know, it don't seem realistic no more. I just hey don't man. Feel it. Hey, them people was at them people was athletes, man. They way they be throwing themselves around, dude. Oh yeah, hitting them ropes. I can't shit. do it. You're right. right. I can't do it. But still, it just don't feel good. It just don't feel good watching it no more. I don't feel that that urge of thinking, oh, who really gonna win this battle? You already know who gonna win from the beginning. Facts. That shit. I mean, it don't matter to me. I, I, it's entertaining. It's entertainment to me. Sports entertainment. Hey, D. Rock. I want to get your opinion because like, I think you're gonna be probably different than mine on, on Kamala Harris. Oh, you want to think what I feel about it? I mean, to hear what she's done in the past, it doesn't look good. I don't really trust her. I'm not going to act like I'm just all the way on the boat, you know what I'm saying, and riding with her. But a lot of, like, these famous people are like, oh, well, y'all shouldn't judge. You know, this is our chance of having a black person in office. Fuck just being black in the office. Now, at this point, bring something that's going to change it. You know what I'm saying? Am I going to vote for Biden? Yes, I'm not going to vote for Trump. So it's, it's obvious who I'm going to vote for, but even with that vote, they need to come with some real shit. They need to give us some type of plan, some type of setup where it's going to help black people. I'm sorry. I don't really care about everybody else's shit right now. I think we just need our moment. I don't think they should fuck with the Mexicans and deportation. I think they should leave them alone. That shit should just be, let them be, you know what I'm saying? Or work out a plan or whatever you're going to do. Fuck that big ass wall. But as far as for like black people, we need, we need some fucking help. We need some respect. So, so here's, here's my thing. I actually agreed with you as far as her past until recently, right? And mm-hmm. I think I think a person has an opportunity to get on the right side of the issues, if I could say that. And I was and I've had conversations, I think I've even had conversations with Tiz as far as it's like, you know, that she was guilty of locking up a whole bunch of black people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And keep keeping a lot of black folks locked up. But I think like some of it, some of it to me feels like she's super ambitious and will do what needs to be done to get where she wants to go. But then if you really look at her politics since she stepped down from being a DA and for like the last nine years, she's actually been one of the chief proponents of criminal justice reform. So yeah, hey, you know what I'm saying? Hey Kings, let me, hey Kings, let me say, man, like you know, I don't know if everybody watched the news. Like you know, it's it's kind of you know hit or miss whether people watch. You know, you gotta watch both channels or whatever, so you can get both sides. Right, and each side is biased or whatever. But you know, like recently, like I watched a couple of things and I read up on her, man. You know. Yeah, she used to be a prosecutor and, you know, she may have been on, on the other side of the law as far as, you know, Black Lives Matter and what, you know, what they're talking about as far as police reform or whatever. But when she made it to Congress, like, you know, she did things like, you know, uh, minimum sentences and all that. So, like, she took her prosecution skills to Congress and understood, like, as a prosecutor, she understood, like, where the flaws was in the system. So she got, you know... Okay. Her point was to change some things. So I don't know if they know that or if they're going to research that. But, you know, just looking at the fact that, oh, she used to be a prosecutor. I'm like, you know, I need them to get educated. You know, read about it, you know, before you just make a, a decision on it. Yeah, well, and that's, and that's, what, that's where I was, right? That's exactly where I was. I just got I just got educated yeah. on it. But I was I was exactly where D-Rock was until I, until I basically got more information on the fact that her, her track record for the last nine years has been completely pro criminal justice reform. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, pushing it, the needle for it. As far as far as that's concerned, man, because of the simple fact that she from she from my hometown, and <laughs> you ain't both from the town. Hold on, listen, listen, hold on, listen, listen, listen. 
because I know people that's personally affected by some of her, some of her, uh, some of the things that she did and who she locked up and all of that, all of people, okay. people personally affected by that. So okay. I, yeah. I get all that. You know, I know you got to do a job. I'm not going to sit here. I'm pretty much trying to be mom on it because right now, as black folks, we got way too much momentum to be sitting here cutting down other black folks in these situations. I think that we need to be like, all right, man, you did you did this over in this part, this section of whatever it was, your career. You're doing this now. So for the greater good at this particular time, anything is going to be better than Trump. So we need to ride with it and get your ass up out of there. If, if there's anything that you have an opportunity to do to be able to help the black community and fix right some of the wrongs and policy policy and bills is not necessarily something that could be stood on as 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 oh see you see you're bad because you did that at the time that at the time yeah. that these bills were enacted you got to think the crack epidemic was hidden crime was at an all-time high um you know people were gun gun violence was at an all-time high and you know shit um you know oakland was like the murder capital so there were stretches and things that needed to be done at that particular time and she stepped up and did that it may not have been favorable to to our people at the time but yeah. it was it was sweeping it had it it, it, it kind of had to happen in order to be able to try to just stop the bleeding man i can't i can't 100 percent get behind that and the reason why i say that is like if, if you're not People put this normally decisions like that are made. They're made in a, from a position where people are not in tune with what's actually happening on the ground. And big, big things that happen like that, big uh, bills that go into effect. Like for example, everybody's upset about the crime bill with, with Joe Biden. Um, you know, being a part of that crime bill. But there's second, third order effects that happen. That of course you couldn't you know predict that were going to happen, but. This is what I'm saying. I'm saying all of this to say I feel like at this moment they need to get in front of the fact of we we've made mistakes and they need to admit those mistakes that they made with with the bills. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, so this is what we thought was good at the time, but now we realize that this could have been a lot better if we've made mistakes. This these are the actions and these are the fixed actions that we want to put in place in order to in order to move the needle forward. For example, she's going to Detroit, right? They're going. They're both going to Detroit, and I feel like in order, it's it's one of the black, one of the biggest black majority cities in the country. So they said, if not the biggest, I think they said it was the biggest. So I think saying and having that transparency and being able to ha own up to the ill parts of the things that you've done, as well as take credit for the for the great things that you've done, I think she has to own up to it. I think Joe has to own up to it, and I think they have to basically get people understanding that we're really on this side of this issue now and we're waiting we're trying to fight for you, you know i think saying? i think you're probably gonna be waiting a while for that to happen because they're at a point now where it's out in the open and it's just like okay we're wearing this shit, whatever but for them to be able to try to walk that back at this time we're not necessarily it, walking back i'm not saying walking back at all well what you're well, what you're saying you know what is saying? They, need to, they need to be up front and say that it was a mistake which you're not going to do that so it's it's it's, it's in a it's it's in a it's in the vein of you do that you wear what you, you wear what you wear hey we did what we did but this is what we're doing now if you focus on the now and not so yeah, much i'm saying i'm saying that you can't, i'm saying i'm saying they have to mention they have to mention it but also follow it up with this is where we're going you know what i'm saying but i think it's important to admit the, admit the, the fault the first thing they're going to need to do is let Kamala Harris do all the speaking and not let Joe Biden talk anymore, period. That, that's a big, <laughs> hey, don't do that big, to Joe, those, man. Yo, no, that was a big... And I love Uncle Joe. I love just, Uncle Joe. And just, that was a big fact. Just last week... Those are big facts. Just last week said some suspect shit. And as soon as they did that, they was like, man, if you don't go get a VP for we slap your ass, man, what the hell is wrong with you? Talking about... What did he, what he say? That the... Uh, he was talking about the... Not the diversity... About, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, well, you know, the, the African Americans are not don't don't have to deal with an issue of diversity. Like, hold on, what are you talking about? Well, he was basically trying to say there's different different shades and hues and different diverse races in Mexico in, 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 in to, Hispanic culture. Oh, you which, got to which know. is still stupid because we have so many different so many right. different hues, so many different cultures, so many different 
people like it, it, that you, the, the African American experience is not cookie. Hey, can I say this? You can't say that. Can I say this though? Let me let me let me tell you what 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 I got from it and how I got misconstrued. So my man was talking about the fact that, that political aspect of it, right? So he was trying mm-hmm. to say, and he didn't say it the right way, but in the Latino and Hispanic and all that culture, they're, they're way more diverse in relation to African Americans as far as uh, voting for this side or that side or whatever, right? So That's like, if you were to true. take a, but what if you take the population of African Americans, let's say you take them in America, the percentage is over 50 for Democratic. So you but you agree or you don't agree? I can't say that because I'm 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 running to way more people nowadays who do not share the same views. And and they are like well, listen, it, they, there's no quite they, no, they, like you know, you can always try to label them, oh, they ain't really black. No, they they for real black. And they don't they don't see stuff the same way. You know what I'm saying? But but that's the thing, Kings, is that's beside the point. The point is that when you talk about diversity, right, if you have a majority of a of a of a, a culture or something that votes a certain way, and then you have another culture where it's almost a better split, it may be 60-40, it may be 55-45, but that's more diverse than a 80-20 or that's a, but that's not true you too, because saying? historically, historically a lot of Hispanics vote Republican. So that so that's not his 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 metrics are completely skewed all the way around. You know what I'm saying? Listen, like, I ain't to- yeah, I, I ain't talking for Joe. I'm just saying I think oh. that's what he was trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just think I just think he's not I just think he's not equipped to be able to to be able to navigate that that way. He's just not he don't have the tools, man. He just don't have the tools. Yeah. And he just needs to stay away from that. And I'm so glad because Kamala's gonna be able to do that. On a regular basis, she's gonna be able to tear. She's gonna tear Trump's ass up. Yeah, but she's not gonna be on that that debate stage when it comes to the both of them. You know what I'm saying, dude? But, but she in the she in the war room with him, so it's just like, dude, you got you got you got your secret weapon in the war room with you. Man, he got you know, he, he ain't had that. He ain't had that before. Now he, he got somebody. Script, he got somebody to know what time it is. He got. He can't go off script like Trump does. He can't if he if he stays on script, we'll be fine. Yeah. yeah, man. All right. Well, so we done with the uh, we done with the let's, done with the politics. Uh, let's get into something fun. Um, let's talk WAP. <laughs> I guess I expected it to be worse than what it was, and in it, like, okay, so definitely, moms was like, yeah, it was terrible, and I'm like, I kind of feel like, uh, what was that? Uh, the song Cardi put out right before that, when when, when like she was kind of like they had the scene where her naked. You know what I'm saying? I oh, felt that like, narrows it. That narrows it down to like six videos. Keep going. You, you <laughs> right. But I mean, it was. I think it was that one scene. It was. It was. It was. It was just her. Um, was it? You talking about money? I think. Yeah, I'm talking about money. Yeah, <clears throat> like money was more shocking to me than WAP. No, WAP video was. I saw kid. it. I was. Uh, it was. They were in like bikinis. It was a beautiful walk. That was great. They were in bikinis. Like <laughs> it, it was like, all right, cool. We saw this in the other video she did with City Girls, right? So I mean, it's like you know, you know, what, I can't you know what I can understand about that though is that dudes coming out here talking about, oh my god, man, they're so they're setting such a bad example for our daughters, and that, man, if you don't shut the fuck up with that, do you understand? That the baby was just out here making light of slapping the shit out of one of his fans yeah. and making that a punchline that weekend is like every other fucking bar talking about drug culture and he in the top 40, my nigga. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I mean the whole but people it's, need to be more responsible all the way around. You know what I'm saying? It's entertainment. It's they entertainment. act like Lil' Kim wasn't around back then, like Lil' Kim wasn't talking that shit back in the Ooh. day. It's entertainment. Even, even if, you, if your kids, if, you, if you're raising your kids properly, they gonna know what time it is. They gonna know to walk away when it's time to walk away. And that's the way. That's the way I feel, man. It's like sure. You can't stop. Uh, you can't stop. You cannot stop entertainers from entertaining in that situation because, dude, short short been doing it for years. Snoop okay, and let me, let me let me paint this picture then. 
I'm pretty sure Mom Deuce was not happy with you listening to Short, correct? My mom, man, my mom already knew I was responsible. He was already set. Anyway. You gotta be slick with yours anyway and listen to it when you ain't around. So that okay, so then that's the thing. Face. That's the thing, though, right? So we have this, we have this material that is, you can't say it's edifying. You know what I'm saying? And it's like you know that the kids are gonna find a way to listen to it, or see it, or be exposed to it. They see it on TV. They see it on TV all the time. It's on radio. I'm not disagreeing. I'm not disagreeing with that. that. I'm not. I'm not. not, Let's be clear. Let's be clear. I'm not singling out Cardi B or Meg Thee Stallion. I'm singling out the industry as a whole and entertainment, like you're calling it, as a whole. Needs is is kind of it's kind of raunchy, and like stuff needs to be cleaned up. Period. All across the board. As long as, as long as these as long as these regular labels are making money off of it, and it ain't gonna clean up no time, no time soon because yeah, somebody yeah. somebody getting somebody getting fat off of it. As long as that continues to happen, you're just not gonna yeah. see it. But, but I, it, do, I it, totally disagree with people completely trying to single out Cardi B and Megan Stallion. Yeah, it's been going on since before them. They ain't they ain't invent the wheel. The wheel needs to be changed. You know what I'm saying? This gang got no trail left on it, but they ain't, they, ain't, they did not invent this wheel. <laughs> It's not a. It's not. It's, it's not a. It's not a. Uh, it's not a jury stance on hip hop, dude. If yeah. you want dope hip hop, go go listen to Rhapsody. Rhapsody for real. Rhapsody. What's the black dude go, name? What's the black go, dude name? Uh, the, I don't know. Dude had like the weird hairstyle. Talking about don't try me, try Jesus. I forget his name though. Oh, you. Oh, you talking about? Uh, you talking about Toby? Yeah, that dude yeah, right yeah. there. That man's oh, dude man. to listen to. Yo, it's I'm like, trying to figure out that whole situation with them because like. Is there marketing cultish? Kind it's like of? an us situation. It's like hey, a, it, it seems hey, really cultish. Hey, they got you know what I'm saying? They got bread back in them. I'm telling you. I'm not doubt. Look, you, you, you defending them. you defending them like I'm, I'm coming at them. I'm defending, I'm, I'm talking about the image. I'm just the imagery that's mean. being presented to me seems very cultish. Everybody it has on everybody has on the ones, the two piece, very flowy. So culty kind of yeah it's it's kind of real culty Still and they even brought and god bless him they even brought the white boy in and he had him in the culty outfit you know what i'm like this is crazy man. i gotta watch the whole thing to see what it, they might have a message in there they might tell him or something i gotta check it out I'm gonna find i out. think i think that's i think that's their i think that's they found their niche they found their, yeah. their thing that's going to set them apart right. from people but it it comes off culty I can't, I can't lie. <laughs> so, it's cult esque based on the story of cult. They're speaking to somebody. They speaking to somebody. They not necessarily speaking to me, but they speaking to somebody. Yeah, cults. Cult. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I don't care. What video was great? Yeah, why? Hey, hey, I was just like. This is what everybody's in uproar about. This video, it was like, I wasn't. I was like, I was expecting like, like some crazy, like you, you might have caught a peek or something. Like it was really not. It was really tame. Did you did you see the backlash with with Kylie being in the video though? Yeah, no, I didn't see hey, that. See, I didn't being in the video like that. No, that's all plastic, my G. If you, I, you go back and look at old Kylie Jenner pictures, that's everything on her is plastic. No, right if you go look, if you go look at the, real whole, you go look right at the, the whole strip of Kardashians, yeah. Yeah. It they it all started, it ain't they nothing, started but, ugly. nothing but die cast metal and all of that. Mm-hmm. He said die cast metal. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> Yeah, nah, that's definitely not it. But the WAP, yeah, that's cool. I just don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not really ready for like the kids to be doing like TikToks to that shit. Cause it seems like kids don't listen right. to nothing, but they'd be quick to do a TikTok. Like they may not hear a word of it, but they like right. TikTok into it. So I got like a stepdaughter, so I can't really have none of that. Like that's an right. automatic shutdown. I care any of it. But I like the song. And, and when me and her mom is chilling, I like the song. You know, it's just. You got to pick and choose when and where you can listen to it. Hi, kids. Do you like violence? Cool. And even hey. even then, even then, it was just like maybe they shouldn't be listening to that. Eminem was. Hey, he had me lost. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't never thought about hurting myself. But he sure made you think about it. Like, what the fuck? I should. 
Oh, wow. Wow. Never. I'm not going to do that. Hey, Never. that's funny. That was not even as funny as you said that. Get, getting into the next topic. So, uh, Logic makes the statement that Joe Budden says things that make people want to kill themselves. In regards to in regards to in regards what? to in regards to making fun of his music. Now, if you listen to Joe's podcast, he is the butt of the jokes when it comes to talking about Logic's Logic's whole like fucking discography. He talks shit about Logic or whatever because the because of the content. Okay. Um. Now, when a person comes out and make a statement like that, it's kind of damning when you're talking about mental health that somebody says something to make you want to kill yourself. I, I think that's. That's really not fair to the, to make that statement about an individual because they're you're not being bullied. It's somebody telling you about your music. Yeah, you my, my, my thing is my thing is if you don't like your music first, then why are you putting it out? If somebody can sway you based off of their opinion, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care who it is, and we all and you also got to consider the source. This ain't Clive Davis. This ain't, you know what I'm saying, uh, Quincy Jones, whose reputations and maybe opinions are valid. This ain't Dre. This ain't somebody who's got a valid opinion. This is Joe Button. And as much as I like Joey, because I'm a fan of Joe, I'm a fan of Slaughterhouse, I've been a fan of them. But Joey's opinion on whether or not something's good or bad to me is not valid. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not, you don't, you don't have those credentials, bro. You know what I'm saying? Well, he at, well actually no, the no. fact that he is but but you know what though? He is an influencer. He's an influencer by the yeah. simple fact of the, the type of crowd that he's that he has. Sure, so that would be like me say, taking anything DJ got academics says is gospel. And, and, and academics is the same way. He has okay. a hive. They have a hive. Anybody that has a hive has influencers that can say things that, that, mean, that, that does not mean their follow. opinion is that does not mean their opinion is valid or right. But it does make it a stronger opinion. Cool. No, it does not. Yes, it <laughs> no, does. Not. No, it does not. Yes, it does. <laughs> no, it does not. <laughs> because of the simple right fact that it's like, dude, you sit here and you watch a commercial and you watch a commercial and it come on 37 times, uh, it goes on 37 times a that night. Just means, that, just like, means, that just means on. you can influence people. That's all that. That doesn't mean the opinion is correct. That, that's, no. not, that's not let me, saying let me, 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 let me break this down for you. Let me break this down for you. I think a person who has the right to an opinion is a person who has the technical know-how to do what they're giving an opinion about, i.e. the gauntlet. We all have technical know-how as far as beats. That's why we give opinions. You know what I'm saying? Clive Davis or Common or like Black Dot or like Three Stacks or Jay or Dre or somebody who's Established. Are you putting logic in, the, in that? Are you putting logic? No, in no, that no, no. What I'm saying, I'm saying that category is the people that can give somebody an opinion. And and Joe Rick Rubin. No, Joe, Joe's not. Joe, Joe is been, not. Joe Joey been, is not in that Joe category. Been Joe around, is not. Joe has been around long matter. enough. Joey Joe is, is not in that category. Hold on, wait a minute. Hold on, wait a minute. Hold on. Joe has been around long enough to be cool. able to, to be credible as far as his opinion on hip hop. He's been through. He's been through it. He's been through enough. He's put out enough projects and enough content to be able to say something. So where his voice has some weight, and on fact, so you're you're telling me that you're telling me that you take the opinion of Joe Button as much as you take the opinion of a Jay Z. Answer that question. That's it not depends fair, on it, it depends. It depends. It How depends is it not? On, it's a slight because those scale. are the people's it's opinions. A, I'm gonna take. It's a, it's a sliding scale. Those are people scale. that it's is a, gonna actually it's, move the needle a, for me. It's a sliding scale. It's a sliding it's scale. Sliding. It, it is. is. It's valid it is. or not. It is. Jay Z is a Jay Z is an active performer. Joe Joe Button is not. Joe Button is a is Joe Button is a podcast radio guy. So so so, radio, so radio. Here's, and here's the thing: if Joey was to say anything about what the podcast, then he's valid because guess what. He's blazed trails. He's done this. He <laughs> he's blazed trails in hip hop. What are you no, talking no, 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 about? No, 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 What I'm saying is, he has, he oh. has, uh, he has a leg to stand on because he literally does this. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it. He's, he's 
carved out paths. Jo- Joey didn't carve no paths in hip hop. Let's be real. What I path? I mean, Joey but Joey, he Joey got Joey out. got big enough. To right. Okay, make a, okay. I'm gonna, tell you. Top, I'm gonna tell you to make a top hit though. Cool. And, what and, what and, path and, did he carve in hip hop? Now, and uh, answer that question about any of those other legends that I said about what what paths they carved out in hip hop. And you can answer that question yeah, but, and say they absolutely have, which uh, means their opinion is valid. But that's, so his opinion that's is the not flow valid. Of the argument no, that's to the top. It's not, it's not to not to not to you. Uh, his opinion is not valid. No, not to me. Not not so much so lo- logic should feel like oh, the cool well, that's, 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 that's to me. To be honest, man, that's a personal problem, dude. And I feel you, but <laughs> honestly, <laughs> feel feel that way about somebody like Rick Rubin. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, you should like, feel that way about Rick Rubin anyway. Yeah, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is not that's necess- that's just not necessarily how I'm gonna kill him, but maybe be like, uh, maybe I'm maybe if, I need to if Jay, if Jay came down today and told me my, my shit was trash, I would not be ready to go fucking get on a chair. No, I'm not saying be ready to kill happen. yourself, but it th- that opinion might matter to you more than Joe Button. No. It's all in who you admire. It, it's all it's all in who you admire. I I'm talking about. Admire. I'm talking about. I, I'm talking I, about track record. I'm talking about. I'm he, talking about status in the game right now. I, per- ain't got it. I personally admire. I personally admire him. So that would even come to a fact. He only saying it because we on this podcast. He won't join to see it. Right. See, my thing is this. <laughs> I I, I kind of agree a little bit with nightlife as far as. If 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 Joe Budden says it, whoever watches this podcast that really rock, I'm gonna say it. But at the same time, you're in a business where people are not gonna like you, bro. I mean, you the bigger you get, the more you gonna have haters. So you gotta have tough enough skin. Get your mental health right. Talk to people. Do whatever you gotta That's do. That's my point. The yeah. only person who's gonna basically make me stop and make me be like, um, oh, would be like somebody who's proven. Premier said yeah. some stuff because of their, their because of their credentials. Joe, sure. we ain't got no credentials enough to be telling nobody nothing that should be moving them like that. You well, know, whoever he talking to need to tell him that, like, yo, you really hurt by a nigga that's nobody, and he should be okay. But he ain't talking to nobody. He's holding him emotional. <laughs> and it's hurting him. Yeah, and I feel bad for him. I, I just think, you know, it gets to a point where you gotta wonder. It's like, okay, well, is, is there certain things that I know mental health is no is no ploy, but when you start doing that type of stuff and bringing other people into it by saying, well, you're, that's like me saying, oh, well, Kima didn't agree with me on this. So I, I don't feel like I should live anymore because he didn't agree with my opinion on what the yeah, fuck. Of course. Like, okay. So what? It, it should, it should even, it should even, it shouldn't even be that deep. No matter who said it. Absolutely. I don't care especially, Rakim not, said that shit. especially not Joe's bum tail. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, I think it's, I, okay. Well, uh, that's, that's my man, so I, uh, you go put respect on his name, but it's cool. Though. Nope, it's good. It's good, though. It's good, though. I ain't gonna do it. That's like to me, he's in the same lane as academics, bro. Period. I, that, I, I that's, that's wild that you would put him in the academics category. Ca- a- academics, he used to do the same thing with act, he was literally on the same show. Come on. <laughs> Academics is running around holding your man six nine hand running through running through the run through the fields right now. Th- that's so, a, that's a fact. So, so credibility, eh. but yeah. I'm not going to take away the fact that the man has a, the man has a voice because people listen to him every day, struggle and follow him on Twitch and all that shit. So he uh, has that a, means, he has a means, hive. That means I care about his opinion this much. He has a hive. But there are right. other people. Personally, is, I care about his opinion this much. Right. Professionally, business-wise, I might be prone to listen to what he's got right. to say because of his influence. My, my point but personally, is, I care about his opinion this much. I know, but my point is, other people, other there are other people that do, and he has a large sum of people that actually do, which is why it's okay. which, which is the, the business-wise. I need to be concerned about that. Personally, I could give two about it. So it looked like yeah, we ain't enough to be able to make me want to kill myself. That ain't, that's not the thing. <laughs> it looked like we lost his. I don't yeah, know. We, yeah, we did. It looked like D Rock is rocking is uh wilding. You, you, you froze too. 
Uh, no, nah, I'm good. I'm here. I ain't froze. I'm here. I'll just go at it over over how tears this is for y'all. I just let y'all go for a minute. I just be listening. <laughs> Listen, I feel bad for Logic, man. He going through some stuff. He retired. You know, I don't think <clears throat> he retired. Yeah, that's why he he retired. Oh yeah, my God. he retired. He did. But, but I believe nah, he retired. Just he felt like he wasn't getting his respect, and, and he felt like he just. Couldn't really handle. It. I don't know. I, yeah, don't really said, I, I said all of that stuff I said before. Mm-hmm. Logic is he was cool, but he was like he was something tired. like him. It just wasn't me, you know. That's you what, know what I'm saying. So I mean, it's just like I said all I said before, but I mean, at the same time, it's just like whatever. It doesn't matter. Like you, you know, he yeah. said, "Why don't you try harder?" Then? <laughs> I'm just saying, no homo, but he ain't had that sex appeal. You know what I mean? He was supposed uh, to be well. He black, and I did. I could never tell unless he said it. Whenever yeah, he said it, I was yeah. like, right, "You black," but I never <laughs> could tell. I was like, "Bro, you're not even albino. Hey, That's not even working." For he me. would never. He would never take an opportunity not to let you know that too. <laughs> for real though, I mean, when you that light skin, you come on now. I would probably be the same way. In his defense, I'd probably be like, "Hey, bro, I'm really black, man. Like, stop." He's not all nonsense. I'm really black. Kimmy, you ain't gonna have no friend. You ain't gonna have no friends, saying. Hey, hey, look, <laughs> hey, look, hey, look. If I was that light skinned man, I understand the struggle, bro. If you're in black, like, yo. Like, you, but you know what I'm saying. I understand the struggle because you're never black enough for somebody. You know what I'm saying. Everybody goes gonna be questioning. So I, 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 I can dig it. Well, I'll probably be saying. I'm not. I'm not gonna get into like the borderline hate speech about it, man. That's just like you know we're gonna let logic be, man. You know, yeah. God, God bless him. Man's black. Hey, 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 go ahead, man. Retirement, brother. You know what I'm saying? Do your thing. Be on Twitch. We gonna we gonna flip the hourglass for him. No man cry, cry, pray, <laughs> raise your kids, all that stuff. That's dope. <laughs> I dropped it. You know what I'm saying? And hey, he black and he from Maryland, man. We flipping the hourglass for life. From Maryland, okay, black. that yeah, that he from tougher. Maryland. He ain't from the. He look, I ain't never been the way he lived. Where you live at, but it's all good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I respect him shit. He been through some shit, man, but I just feel like you gotta know what you come into and when you what you're coming into when you come into the business. Yes. It ain't no love in this business. They're gonna they're gonna talk shit about you always. Oh man. Yeah, man. All right. Um, so we can uh move the content on. So did anybody see the verses with Ross and Two Chains? I did not. I didn't get a chance to get I watched a little bit of it. It was kind of dry, you know? That's one thing I did take. It was kind of dry. And Ross has hits, you know? Ross has hits. Uh, two Chains has hits from being Two Chains and Titty Boy. So right. it was a good battle. It just wasn't as, like, hyped up. It's like, I don't know whose battle was hype as fuck. I think, I think it was, was Snoop and DMX. They was Snoop the and DMX. Even though DMX was a chair dancer, he was killing it. So, you feel <laughs> me? They was doing their dance. Hey, DMX, man, DMX had a hard life. Let that, leave that man alone. Let him. What's his funny ass is ass. like a day later, he was up dancing though, really getting it. It was like he didn't <laughs> have that live though. He was. But hey, I, he I respect was. him. DMX is hard. I just seen a piece of his Rough Riders uh, Chronicles. I'm about to watch the rest of it later oh, on. Oh, so. is that already out? It's on Hulu, right? Nah, it's on B. Well, I don't know. It might be on Hulu. It's on BET. Oh, I'm trying to check that. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. I just finished No Limit. Now I'm about to start Rough Riders. Yeah, I want to see no. I want to see the No Limit one, man. I, I, I would definitely I'm want. I'm waiting to on this that. No Limit documentary that Master keep keep talking about. Was going that's the, I think that's the one. That's the one. It's out. It's out. It's, it's the, five the episodes. Movie? It's, on B, it's on BET. It's oh no, the no, movie no, you talking about? No, he's coming out with that. Oh no. No, that's that's like, like like the like the uh, Strata Compton movie, like you're not. Yeah, he, he keep talking about no. he gonna do a one for No Limit, and I'm waiting to see it. And I, hey man, where that P? Listen, <laughs> I, respect, <laughs> I respect Master P. He's a boss, but yeah, that got the hookup too sucked. So yeah, he gonna do a movie no, about himself, about his life. It was. Nah, cool. Don't say that. Hey, don't say that, night. I, I got the hookup was like old school movie for like back in the 1950s. It was. This one was just a whole bunch of random ass shit, so it just didn't make no sense. I liked a lot of his old shit, but um, yeah, I don't know, man. If he gonna do his own production for his movie, yeah, he better get like some real motherfuckers, pay that top dollar, because I want to see some real production. Let's be real, he got the bread. Exactly. So pay that top production, because yeah, I do not want the I got the hookup to look. I don't. 
I don't. I love them niggas. I love all them niggas on there. I respect a lot of them people. I want to work with a lot of them. I respect all of them. But that movie was, it was trash. I'm not going to lie. He said the movie was booty. It was. <laughs> <laughs> niggas got paid. I, hey, shout out to niggas getting paid, but right. trash. You know what? I, I, I'll shoot I'll shoot any movie right now. That would be that be good for me. I don't care. I care what the goddamn quality look like. The movie was <laughs> Hey, you never know. Shit. I put out my show, my shit make it, and I make it big in life. One day somebody will be like, that shit was trash. Hey, I yeah, respect I saw, it. I saw, I saw the little uh, behind yeah. the scenes shot promo, JJ. Okay, I saw yeah, that. All right. We're going to get y'all at the end of the pod, too. So when we going out, 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 out. out. He's going to get it. He's going to get it. Rocking rock a hard place, man. That shit is. That's going to be dope. I already know. That's just, just going to be hilarious. Appreciate it. No. Uh, it was something I wanted to bring up, too, man. It was something I wanted to bring up. I gotta, I'm trying. I'm going to catch it. Go ahead. Let me catch it. No, ain't um, <laughs> I hate you. I hate everything about you. <laughs> Tears, oh, you got anything you want to talk about, man, since we brought you on? Hey, look, man, you know, I feel like it's a it's a prime opportunity, but, you know what I mean, I had nothing prepared, man. I'm just glad to be here. I'm glad to see my brothers out here doing stuff, man. I'm glad to see y'all. You know, I, I always had dreams of, you know, spreading the word, you know, having a good time, letting people see you have a good time, and then maybe people will mess with you and and and, and support you, man. And so that's all I want to say is, man, I'm proud of y'all. I'm proud of y'all having the show, doing what you do. You know, I'm blessed to be on here, man. Like, you know, I make jokes all the time, but, man, I ain't never been on camera, and now I ain't even on camera, my, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to, so, gonna have to, yeah, we're gonna have to that's all that situation straight, bro. It's his talk box. Hey, look, ain't nobody gonna buy it. <laughs> <laughs> we're, gonna get to, we're gonna get your webcam situation straight, okay. right? So, um, and just to get on to something a little bit more, uh, more gloomier, of course, unfortunately, oh, man. Uh, we had the, the situation in Chicago, um. I was which situation though? You know, it's been 145 of them now. Well, well I know, but the the one recently that is that has caused all the uh, all the looting and rioting right now. Uh, um, I'm not tracking that at all. What's going on? Yeah, man, there was um, there was a there was another police shooting. Um, you know, the suspect apparently. There's more information that I know. I definitely need to get on it. I was trying to make sure that I read it up on it today, so I can be somewhat knowledgeable about it. So I guess the the, uh, the dude was uh had a had a gun and he was near some uh, place where kids were so the police came out dude ran was busting at the, was busting at the police and then they end up they end up shooting them and so i guess it was people there from the neighborhood that seen it they didn't like the way it went down so it started a whole a whole big old situation and that's how it mushroomed into this whole looting and rioting type of thing um it's just now I'm gonna make a very preemptive statement and please don't have I'm gonna make a very preemptive statement based off of what you gave me, and it's based definitely based off of just the information that I have right now. I will go back and do do the proper research and I'll and if I have a difference of opinion, you'll hear it on that to what the podcast. Yeah, right. But as it stands, you're armed in a child in a child's area, you're running away from cops, firing at police, and then you get shot. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a it's a tough pill to swallow, man. It's like you never want to see anything like that. You always you always feel that things can be handled differently, but in a situation where you know both both situations are armed and are shooting, um, it's just it's just a t- it's tough to call. That's why I wanted to make sure I read on it because I was like, okay, well, there's rioting and looting happen. It's not just for nothing. Let's let's figure right. out what's going on. And so then when I when I dug deeper on it. And I found that situation. Uh, so the dudes, dudes arrested. Um, um, he's he didn't die. He was arrested. He's held without held without bail right now. Mm-hmm. He on murders on on, on um, attempted murder charges, of course, because he shot at police. Right. Uh, right. you know, I, I don't. For for people to react the way that they react. You know, maybe there's more to the story and more to what happened. Yeah. And if, if we find out more information, like I said, I will change my stance. 
But the reason why I was upset about George Floyd or Mata Aubrey, those things, like those individuals, is because they were not armed. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they were they were pursued and chased and, and, and murdered. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a strong difference between you you feeling like you you should fire at police and like you just getting taken down because they're afraid of you. You know what I'm saying? Like two totally different things to me. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's uh, just it's just hard, man. It's like you know you you got to be careful of kind of kind of where you wrap your you know you wrap your your causes around in situations like that because mm-hmm. now you know does it, stuff. does it does it yeah does it undercut the other situations that have happened mm-hmm. with this with this situation happening and everybody reacting the way that they're reacting to it it's you know it's it's heartbreaking to see um you don't want to see people put themselves in destroy their city in that situation uh, no. uh, under mm-hmm. under those pretenses it's it's tough I, I, well i just think well well what my bad d but I, i'm just saying man i seen the protests that part but then i also seen that my mans and them went to the louis to the you know what i mean to the gucci to the you know what i mean and i'm like i'm just like when they gonna stop clouding uh rifle protests with you know what i mean because i don't think they understand like I've, I've always said that looting and looting is not protesting bro like not. looting is completely different like you walking out with louis or you walking out with a tv is not further in the movement it's not you know nah, I, I think i think depending on what to, depending on what's done in those situations i mean to me symbolism is burning out a police station facts you know what i'm saying not, i mean not, you know, not, symbolism not, is pulling not, pulling, not, down, not, pulling down a statue you that. know, symbolism is uh, if you go to the establishment where maybe um, the people funded this type of activity and you burned it down. OK. All right. I understand that. But using that as an opportunity for you to come up is kind of crazy. It, it kind of lessens it. Go ahead, now, I mean, I'm not with the loot. You know me. I'm not, I'm not with that because that just all that's going to do is bring more trouble towards our way. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not really with that. <clears throat> but I mean, police in Chicago, Chicago itself is just a scary city. I ain't never even been there my damn self, but you hear so much about Chicago, it make you don't want to go there. And now that I'm executed the whole whole armed forces and a whole bunch of just cops and just all kinds of stuff down there, man. They got big old like tank type of fucking cars all on the streets. I mean, I'm praying for the people of Chicago, man, at the end of the day, but the killing on the black on black killing has got to stop. I mean, I don't understand why we keep killing each other, especially when we're supposed to be working together for something bigger and better for ourselves. It just don't seem like we can get back in the day times where the black dollar was all around. It was always going around and black families was always together and everybody stayed together like that. But it's, I don't really believe it could ever get back to that. And that's crazy. I, 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 have, I have conspiracy theories about that, but I feel like that's a little bit too deep for what the podcast on Leah alone. You <laughs> might be hey, your conspiracy theory might be right though. I ain't gonna lie because it it feel like something had to make this happen. Just some shit. well, I think it's a, I think to me, man, it's just like these things. There are situations where it's a matter where it's a matter of survival and it's a matter of how people grew up in that situation. Um, you are you may not you may not know better. You may have grown up in that culture. You may have grown up in gang culture. You may have grown up in situations where you're impoverished and the only way that you can get what you need to get is knock somebody upside the head. That's that's the way that people that's the way that people live. It does not excuse it, but it does offer an well, opportunity also, to be able to understand. Before you, on, before you move on, let's also remember it happens just as the same. I would say the numbers are proportionally even in white neighborhoods, but it's not called white on white crime. It's not called Asian on Asian crime. Mm-hmm. It's not called all these other things. It's called crime. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. Literally. They, they gave they gave black and black on black crime a label for political uh for political reasons and for political uh position. Their own gain, yeah. It's yeah. Their own gain. You know what I'm saying? So well, it, it makes it sound it makes it sound big and bad if you give it a name. You know what I'm saying? Then it's a Absolutely. then it's labeled. Once it's branded, once something's branded, it's like okay, that's it forever. 
yeah. <laughs> you will you will always anytime right. a black person kills somebody or kill kill another black person, right. regardless of what the reason is, it's black on black crime. You could be right. defending yourself, a person right. could be robbing you, and you and you and you shoot them, or somebody could somebody could have harmed your kid, and you go up right. and you kill them. It's like it's still it's still going to be labeled as black on black crime, regardless. Because that's the branding material right. that they use for us. Yeah, but white on white crime is called crime. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah but look at, it, look at it like this, though. Like, if you try and discredit some of my argument, you're saying these people is doing stuff to us, right? Mm -hmm. A great count is to say, but you're killing yourself. So, like, so why did I value you? So if, are they. But, but no, but that's what I'm saying, though, is the thing is, if they don't want to hear your argument or they want to defeat it, then why not point it out? You know what I mean? That like that's what it is. You know what I mean? And so like until we get to a point where, and I always say this, man, and I'm gonna go into my box and expose myself. But until we fix ourselves, man, we we can ask for respect all we want, but we gotta force them to respect us, man. We gotta have communities where we build and we together. Where I they can't rock with that, man. I can't rock with that because because the the like this. There's been no respect that has been forged or built on the on the other side of issues, but but individuals on that side, and I'm not saying all white people, I'm not saying all anybody, but like like everybody who is not black has blazed trails and made stuff happen for themselves in the midst of in the midst and if in a been afforded respect in the midst of not having respect for themselves. So I don't see it, I don't see it as any different. And then also, it's like you, you put yourself in that situation and you go, you're discounting the fact that it is not the majority of the population of African-Americans that are in this situation that do that, that, that perpetuate this type of stuff. Right. So it's like you can't sit here and say, well, we got to say we got to, you know, we got to take care of ourselves and all that stuff. Hell, a majority of us are taking care of ourselves. So it's like, what do you? When, where does it where does it stop at? But see, that's, like, that's like when they debunk the myth of, of the black fathers and you know the absent fathers in the home. Right. Like, then, they really, really, then they really then they really did the research and they were like, no, actually, the just be, the, the the absent father the father might be absent for the home, but the father is absolutely taking care of the child. You know what I'm saying? And they like there's a lot of kids that actually legit still have their dads. You know what I mean? Then he not may not be with mom. But they still have their dad, and their dad is active in their life. And it, and it it's a sweeping, it's a sweeping generalization, and that's the danger. That's the most <laughs> dangerous thing that you can do to any any culture, any movement, any type of thing is make a sweeping generalization about it. Absolutely. We give other we give other races and other we give other races and other ethnicities the biggest time the, the hardest time about making sweeping generalizations about black people, and then. We fuck around and make sweeping generalizations about ourselves. Right. So, so let me let me just say this, man. Before we move on, though, like I'm I'm a person where I live both sides, right? I got family that been on Section Eight for their whole lives. I live Section Eight for a little while, but I also got my other side of family who they work hard and pull themselves up, right? So the thing is, to me, is like. If you know that the argument and the, and, and the device that they're using against you is the fact that we're doing this and that, how long how long is it before us that's in that situation defeat that argument? You know what I mean? Like we. And, and my question, my answer to that is, and my question, my follow up question is, why is that quantifier not valid for them? Cause it's not fair, bro. I keep telling. Look, look. I don't want to get into the soapbox, but I tell you, life ain't fair. And I mean, it, I mean, if you want to succeed, you gotta I'm, not be gonna, I'm not going to wear the label just because they want to perpetuate a label when no. they're just as guilty. I agree with you. I, I agree. That shit, that shit don't apply to me. It Here don't. Though. I'm, a, I'm a father who take care of his kids. I work hard when I'm out. And I ride down a neighborhood. If it's a nice neighbor or, or, or any neighborhood, I turn my music down out of respect for other people. It don't matter whether it's a white or black neighborhood. But mm -hmm. my thing is like everybody ain't like that. So I'm like, when you get labels put on you and shit like that, like you know, it's it, that's regular life, man. They can put labels on you. So if you want to change that, it's not to say you change yourself. But I'm like, be conscious of other people, though. You know what I mean? Like, you, it, there's certain things that you got to do. Everybody got to conform. If you don't conform, you ain't going to make nothing. You're not going to get nowhere. You, 
everybody, people always talk about, oh, I'm going to be free and do all this and, and do that. But everybody who got a job wear a uniform, they, if they got to cut their hair, they cut it. If you got to present yourself a certain way, you do it to be successful. Like, and it doesn't matter whether you white or black. It's white people out here that got long hair and, and you know what I mean, want to be rock stars. But I, I guarantee you they cut their hair and they do all that. So if you want to conform to get what you want to get, then that's what you got to do. You know what I mean? I, I, feel, like, I, feel, like, I feel like that. I feel like conforming for a professional standard is a completely different argument than being able to being able to make a general and sweeping uh, stereotype or judgment on, on a group of people and it be valid or we, or to the point where we, we need to do extra because we need we got to fix ourselves before we they're, they're they're not even interested in fixing themselves. They, they don't, and they're not even afford it. They don't. They don't have to worry about people coming at them and saying white on white crime, or Asian on Asian crime, or whatever, whatever crime. Like that's not being perpetuated to them. Like why is it that we have to do something completely different? Like conforming. You just said conforming. It doesn't matter who it is. If there's certain there's certain things that people are trying to get to, then everybody has to conform to social norms. This is not social norm. This is this is an attack. This is this is bias. This is being placed in a box by individuals who are afraid and don't know how to express their, their fact that they they fear what they don't understand. So I they mean, aggressively go after it. I agree with you, King, but all I'm saying is that don't think that it's not and I'll use any culture that feels a certain way or acts a certain way about another culture, but Mm -hmm. that they got to keep that in the closet when they go out and if they want to be you know what i mean if they want to get where they got to get you know what i mean and so it's not, not this america I mean, i'm just saying, like it's a man that hates karen, that. Karen, karen and ken exist right now bro not this america look either you're gonna get it either you're gonna get there or you're not that's how i look at it man like that's how i was taught growing up by my father either mm -hmm. you're gonna get there or you're not either you're gonna do what you gotta do or you're not Waiting for other people to change their mind or look at you a different way, either you're gonna get there or you're not. You're not gonna change their mind. They already got that perception, like you, and we sitting here waiting for them to understand us and, and, and respect us and, and accept us. Either you're gonna get there or you're not. So if you ain't going if you're gonna fight the system, then you're gonna have a hard life. That's just life. So, if, so my question is this: either we're gonna get there or not, is what you just said. So why we got to do anything different than anybody else, and we just we're gonna blaze the trail and get them get where we need to get to? That's you know what I'm saying. Yeah, no. Like, I, look, look, and, and, and like we had the conversation though. That's the thing is like the people that's in power make the rules. Cool. That doesn't mean that's I get, that, it is. That, that, is, that is not mean. That does not mean like this. People rulers change, bro. And we can change it, but it, and, it and what I'm saying is rulers change and unjust rulers change all the time. And time is up. Hey, for hey, hey. I'm going to go back to what we always go back to in this situation. Take your ass to the ballot box. <laughs> Take your ass to the ballot box. You can cure a lot of this shit in the long run. Go to the ballot box and vote. Go to the ballot box in your local election. Your local election. Well. Thank you. Local well, election. Where, where it's all start at first. <laughs> where we start talking about Trump and uh, Trump and Pence and Biden and, and Harris, we got to right. start talking about your your, your city your city you council. Your you know mayor is. Now let me just say this for my grandfather who taught me a lot. I think he like he used to tell me the youngest they forget the fact that your family, my family, all of us, we here where we are because somebody had to go and do what they had to do. That is true. So don't. You, you, I know, King, and like we talk about all the time, it shouldn't be that way, but somebody got to do it. And that's why I put so many families are stuck in the hood, stuck in uh, poverty and all that, because everybody's fighting. But somebody got to do it. Somebody got to go out there and step out there and, and do what they got to do. And it happens all the time, Tiz. That's what, that's what I'm trying to un trying to understand. Yeah. You can make about the hood every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so, this, so again, a sweeping a sweeping generalization is just that. It's, it's not it's not fundamental truth. You know what I'm saying? Man, and, and don't let it keep you down, man. That general generalization, man. Don't let it keep you down. Oh, it's nothing, dog. 
I'm sitting in I'm sitting in the house that I just bought. No, ain't no sweeping generalization. You the flaw somewhere. And that's now that's not a flaw. So that that's 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 really uh, relaying the that's point. A critical, that's a critical point because I, I feel that way too, man. It's like you know you you in a situation where the things that this the stereotypes and the things that get pushed on you, I don't represent those. Now, right. are there stereotypes that I wear proudly? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. There are Definitely. stereotypes that I wear, that I wear just to the core. Let's, okay, so now let's lighten this up. Let's lighten this up. Let's get into oh, that. Yeah, what do you wear? Nigga, so this man, this hey, is going to be the funny hey, part. Hey, hey, I I eat, bro, I eat chicken. I drink yeah. beer. I like barbecue. I like watermelon. I like, I like a hip-hop. I don't like watermelon. Watermelon's trash. Um, Nigga! Hey, what? <laughs> So oh, it's like, what? Hey, I, I, like. I, I, I don't like black eyed peas either. Black eyed peas is trash too. And I don't like black eyed peas. You don't get chitlins the fuck out of here. Listen, you're going too far. Chitlins is still good. I eat that. Oh, shit. God, no. You, I got family from the deep south. So okay. put some hot sauce on that mother and you will eat that shit. I can't do chitlins either. I like my Kool Aid red. It's not even the best flavor though. What is wrong? What is the best flavor? My favorite. My favorite. My favorite. It's like a purple red. <laughs> my favorite noodles come in the red pack. Oh, the red pack? The beef? The, the beef, beef one. You know what, what I'm saying? You know, you know. I'll be going down to Asian Isle now. I don't be fucking with the top ramen. I get like right. some, yeah, they got some all kind of, I get some shit called ramyan now. That's what I eat. I eat ramyan. Let me tell you something. That some, shit. Got good noodles now, bro. You got yeah, with that spicy. Let yeah, me tell you yeah. something. Me and Sandman yeah, on the same page. Little oil you put in there. They got the little packet in there. Yes. You get it. I know what it is. I drink. I they, call, it. they call it the broke boy vegetables I throw up in that motherfucker. That's what I do. A little sliced egg in that mug. You know what I'm saying? I do this. I'm about to do that as soon as we done talking, man. As soon as <laughs> Come out to make some food. This would have drove his stomach crazy. <laughs> okay, I remember what I want to talk about. Yeah, go ahead. I don't even know if this is on the topic list. If it is, I apologize. Yo, Jaguar Wright is out here. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Jaguar Wright, oh, Wright is out here. Who? Wow, bro. Okay, so okay, I guess we older heads, so we know who she is. She used to be one of the members of the Roots. If you remember Jay Z's Unplugged and the girl who was singing her butt off on during Jay Z's Unplugged, that's yeah. Jack Wright. Right. She was one of, the, oh, okay. one of the members of the Roots. So her and Malik B was like this. You know what I'm saying? So she don't feel like he be he's being done well in the wake of his death, and because of that, she airing and I'm gonna say niggas. She airing niggas. Out, son. Yeah. Dude, she yeah. hit out, bro. She, she hit the roots. She hit Black Thought. She hit Quest Love. She, she hit, hit. She hit Common. She hit Jill Scott. She hit Erica Badu. She was. She was just. Oh my God. What's she she is on she, yo, she flamed Jill Scott so bad, dude. I was, it was like, oh, terrible. My God. My God. Oh, man, like Wait, she was singing or she was rapping? No, no. she was literally. T- you know how people tell family business? Yeah. She yeah, was she airing was them out, out son. <laughs> oh, damn. She's like though. She, oh, she, bro. Oh. Go back and watch a lot. Jaguar right. Like the like the cat, Jaguar right. Right with a W. Okay. I'm going to check that out. I, I cannot, I, I cannot do it justice. I cannot do it justice. I can't either. Let me give you a sneak peek. the whole thing. Absolutely. All of them. There's a couple videos. Oh, Let me yeah. give you a sneak peek. She said, "Black thought ain't write his rhymes." Malik B did. <laughs> she said, "She said that she was asleep one time and felt something poking on her head. Woke up, it was common." With Damn. think about it. Damn, uh, like that. Get out. She Eric cats out. <laughs> I'm in a savage, yo. That's all I learned. Yeah, yeah. That's not what Common's image represents, bro. His image is, is like, you know what I'm saying? The soul brother, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, his image saying, is not that. Yeah, she was saying, she was saying, she was saying, Aaron, Ruth, out, bro. Ruth, Ruth got it in so dirty on the tour bus with the with the, uh, with the groupies. Yeah. Like, it was, oh, okay. oh. And she uh, said, that all that used to happen. 
You know what I'm saying? And she's like, until y'all start doing right by Malik, I got stories and I will I wear air, air all of them out. Mm. She talked so bad about Erica Badu, too. Somebody need to pull up, though. Oh, my God. They need, they need to pull up because, man. I'm Somebody telling... need to make all this one sequence like it's watching front to back. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts, dude. Y'all make sure y'all watch that. Y'all got to go check that out. All right. Before we got here, um, I had a, honestly an interesting situation and I wanted to ask you guys about it. Um, the question is, is like, for those of you that, that have kids, um, I, I speak for everybody except for D-Rock, but D-Rock probably have been in this situation um, in regards to maybe parents or seen it, or seen it happen. Um, do you think the kids know that their parents ain't rocking with each other when they split homes? Yeah. Kids, yeah. Are very perceptive. yeah. kids are extremely perceptive. We may not speak on it, but we definitely know. Yeah. Because yeah. that was, I think that was the only time me and my brother had common ground. My brother did not like talking to me, but every time my mom and dad was split and my dad had to go stay somewhere else, that was probably the only time he really would open up and be like, man, this shit kind of whack. And he, feel me, he, he could tell them two wasn't rocking with each other. So, I mean, yeah, it definitely does. It definitely is known. And it affected, it's affecting, I mean, I it affected me my senior year of high school. I was like, I had played my first football game of senior year, came back home, my dad was getting kicked out the house. So to kind of come home to a situation where I was already mad we lost, I got to watch my dad get out the house, pack his shit at the same night. It definitely ain't good. It definitely I've affects been, you. I've been, thankfully, I've never had to actually have them split, but I've seen my parents go to like the brink of like, it was almost there. You know what I'm saying? And I can definitely say I it it, it definitely affects kids. It, it yeah. most definitely does. So I mean how I'm speaking from it is being a parent where my kids have two family homes. Mm -hmm. You know, you come you come to one parent's house, you stay at one parent's house, you get out one way, and then you go to the other parent's house and you get out one way. And maybe the other parent is kind of just like they trying to enforce rules that happen over at their house in your house. Um, and then that creates, that creates some friction. Um, that's a really tough situation when your kids come to you like, um, dad, we know you and mom ain't really rocking. So, you know, we just wanted to come talk. We want to come talk to you about that. I mean, that shit is, that shit is eye opening and it's humbling to have that type of situation happen. Um, and you know, I, I just, I be in my own little bliss in my own little pocket. I don't have no idea. I try to make it a situation where I don't care. Um, I care about what happens, but I like, hey, what happens in what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, and then when they come back over here to Compton, then it's cool. It's gonna be all right. You know what I'm saying? And it's just hard. It's hard. It's it's hard to deal with that, and it's hard to be able to 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 have that to have those conversations. Mm -hmm. And I found myself having that conversation this week and it was really, it was really tough, man. And that's not trying to air my personal business out, but um, I think it's important that fathers know that um, when you guys are, when you guys have two family homes and you're dealing with your children, um, you have to be aware of what their, what their feelings are and what they're going through because you just don't, you just don't know the other side of the coin. You know, they don't, you don't, you don't know. They may hide it. Um, it's better to have that out in the open, you know, ask questions, talk to your kids, you know, see what's up with them, you know, roll that red carpet out to them. Yo, if you got to talk, you got to talk to me about anything. It's cool. You know, go ahead and come through, you know, or, or call me. It's good. Um, because too many times it's just like, all right, cool. You know, it's cool over here. And then it's, you know, it's, just, I just thought that was I just thought that was wild, man. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, there's more there's more involved in it between the, than just you and the person that you're not really rocking with. Kids are a huge part of that. You know what I'm saying? And they're like, uh, un. They're not they're they're not guilty part of that. You know what I'm saying? No matter what the 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 woes or the faults or who did what or what what's going on or the reason between. Y'all being split, the kids are they ain't got nothing to do with that. Hey, they still, but they still gotta hold it. Hey night, hey night. This this 
I'm I'm glad you brought this up, man, because I'm a product of what you're talking about, man. Like my mother and father split when I was four, man. You know, my father was in the military, man. We left moms. And throughout my whole life, you know, you live at I lived at Pop's house. I lived with my father my whole life, man. My man been in it every football game, every everything, man. Like he said he gonna do something, he did it, man. I never had to worry about him making a promise that he didn't keep. But he was super strict, man. And so when we would go to mom's house, you know, or at, at pop's house, man, you know, it was one juice, man. He buy a, a liter of Sunny D or whatever it was. And when it was gone for the week, you drank water for the rest of the week. But going to mom's house, you know, it was, she kept the sodas on deck, kept everything on deck. You know what I mean? Everything was always fun at mom's house, but one of the things my father told me as a grown man was that, you know, a lot of our success that we had, it could have been more, but you know, a lot of the things he faced was the fact that he didn't want his kids or, you know, me and my brother to be like, you know, it's fun at mom house, you know, and I'm strict. So one day my kids come home talking about, they don't want to live with me no more. Right. They want to go to mom house, yeah. you know, cause mom, mom is fun over there. So, it, it stopped him from being his full, you know what I mean, being a full parent because at the same time he's dealing with, you know, I know my my kids got the option. And as a father, way when you really love your kids, if your kids choose that they want to live with their mom as a man, you're going to let them go. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? You want what's best for your kids and you want your kids to be happy. But, you know what I mean? All I'm saying to you is that this, like, I want to remind the fathers too, man, like, you – you got to do what you got to do. My father regretted every day. Like me and my brother, we made it successful, but we could have been way more successful. We could have pushed harder in sports. We could have did all that. But the fear of your kids leaving you, man, like, you know, you got to just be who you're going to be. If you're going to be that father, be that father, man. Like, you know, and, and you can't control what the kids are going to do. If they want to go, you know what I mean? But you got to have a relationship with the mother and tell them, you know what I mean? And, and communication is key. Like, right. tell them I'm doing what I got to do and, and I need you to support me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And, and, and let me, let me be clear in the statement that I'm going to make in regards to this. This is not a referendum on, on parody. This is not me saying that the other half of my, the other half of the core of parenting that's going on is a bad parent. Cause it's not oh, no. their mother, their mothers, their mothers amazing. Does amazing right. things. And, I wouldn't change anything as far as how she raises how she raises our kids, but in regards to relationship, regards to relationship between her and I, and how we see things, at sometimes it is not the best that it possibly could be. I mean, I look at it and it's like, dude, I ain't been told Father's Day since I've been told Happy Father's Day since we split. All right. So when you talk about those type of things, there's scarring that has to do with that type of shit and. That's that's where some of those issues lie, but it has nothing to do. I'm not I'm not even I'm not even going into going in on going in on parenting because she is amazing. She does amazing. She was doing a lot of that shit by herself. Um, And then, you know, God bless that she had another person come into her life and has has helped to raise my kids. And that's cool. Um, I'm really appreciative of him as well. Um, But in regards to us still being able to just be. To, to find a to find a common ground so where we look a little bit better. I mean we try to make that look try to make that look a little bit better, but I think that there's still maybe some there may be some issues. It just was it was startling to me that my kids was basically having conversations about this. I would have never thought my kids would like they were over at a friend's house having a conversation and have a conversation with my stepson about it. And it was just like it was nuts. Um, so that's that's what kind of made me think of it and I thought it was I thought it was interesting and wanted to know what y'all take was on it. I appreciate y'all takes. Yeah, um, yeah. They got opinions, man. They're, they're not oblivious, bro. They're, they're very perceptive. Kids are very perceptive. Perceptive. They know what's going on. Like, yeah. yeah, I would say the number one thing is definitely to communicate with them. I mean, if my mom kind of sat down with me and talked more, I think we definitely could have had a better relationship at that time. Because at that time, I was – Pretty much, I was probably the worst kid around her because I would always get in hella trouble. I caused a lot of issues for her. 
and I would do a lot of shit that I wouldn't be doing if my dad was around. So I think communication would have been really good between me and her. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, like I said, I think that it helped me to understand that now it's like, okay, well, I got to, I got to really be in tune with my kids when it comes to this stuff, man, because I think we just been, we enjoy each other so much when they're here and we have a good relationship in regards to anything else. Cause they'll come and talk to me about anything, but this wasn't mm-hmm. ever one of the things that got brought to the docket. And then they're having these conversations around other people and coming back and telling me. So it's just like, it's yeah. it was humbling and sobering all in all in one. Mm-hmm. Well, let me ask you how you feel though, man. Like how did you handle it though? I mean, it was a, it was, it was tough, man. I didn't, I didn't, it was, it was tough to be able to hear it because it was unexpected to have that conversation brought to you yeah. as a, hey, you know, the kids are saying this and that it was hard to, it was hard to deal with that in the moment. Like, I can't believe my kids were, you know, was, was, was saying this is our so this, this information from her. No, no, no. I didn't get it from her. I got this from, um, there were friends. They were, there were there were friends. Like we had my kids go over to a friend's house, and then they were talking about it over at the friend's house. And then my my stepson Thomas, you know, they are, have a real close relationship with him, and was kind of talking to him about it and whatnot. So it was like, you know, that when you get when you had those things brought separately, and it wasn't anything that they came to talk to me about, and I wasn't aware, which was why I was so so earth breaking for me because I wasn't aware of that shit. I was like, Oh, okay. Well, I thought things was, things was cool. I mean, we, you know, we going to, we going to events and going to, you know, watch, you know, watch basketball games and football games and doing joint stuff. So I'm thinking, you know, it's repairing itself, but still underlying tension there. Okay. Now I know, I know there's some more work to me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, enough about my shit. Um, so I guess we might, uh, we, Damn, this is a record. It's like one sixteen, dude. We usually we usually out of here in two and one and a half, two hours, whatever. <laughs> we doing better. We doing so, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, I ain't gonna eat up no more of uh, of anybody's time, man. So hey, Tiz, thank you for joining us today, man. We'll definitely have you back, brother. You gonna have to don't ever come back. You got to get your camera work straight, bro. I'm playing. Yo, hey, this is talking about don't come back. I'm looking. I'm always yo, listening, yo. <laughs> Dude, you can't come back unless we can see you. This is some bullshit. Hey, look, look, look. That is bad. <laughs> look, look. Wait, 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 the money works. You know what I mean? It got, it I comes got you, bro. I'll tell you how to do it from your phone. Don't worry about it. iPhone, man. Hey, look. You on the iPhone and they tell you to get on, you know what I mean, the stream, Joe? Bro, don't do it. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to show you how to use your iPhone as a webcam. You're fine. I got you. Yeah, okay, bro. I ho- hey, yeah. look. Come, come through. I ain't gotta do that. Right, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you online. I, go I, I ain't gonna figure it out. I did it on my iPhone for the beginning. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, I, it like, was good. It, it was good. No, no, was this, good. Is, this is what I'm saying about Tiz. Tiz is a 65. Tiz is a 65 year old man trapped in a in a 30 year old body. Yeah, hey, hey, right. technology. Damn yeah, right. Technology is over. Man, <laughs> that remind me of my dad. My dad come down here. That boy asked me one question. Go back upstairs and come back down two minutes later. Like, man, I forgot to ask you this too. Show me that hey, part hey, too. Speaking uh, of, I told my father, man, I was playing PlayStation one day, right? This is a funny story. I said, Dad, jump on the game with me. When I tell you my man put all 10 fingers on the controller. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. I said, hey, put a couple buttons at a time. You're trying to use it like a joystick. <laughs> use it like an arcade. Oh, shit. <laughs> I That's said that, yeah, hey, chill out, man. He said, nah, you know what I mean? I'm supposed to hit a ball. I said, man, all right, man, just calm down for a little bit. <laughs> you know what's funny is my dad used to be like the tech guru. Like anything that was like analog. Give him a controller, like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Anything that was analog, <laughs> the, our stereo system coming up was stupid. He had a, like <laughs> the, 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 the graphic equalizer that was like the real one. You could literally move knobs on it and like Kings did pop did pops had a real to real playing 72 hours. He didn't have the real to real, but he definitely he definitely had he definitely had an A-track, and then we went to the tapes and then we went to CDs. But like anything electronic in that realm, he was the guy. And then it felt like all of a sudden he won't the guy no more. And I'm like, what did you do with my dad? Who knew how to hook up all this stuff 
why is it now I'm hooking up on this stuff and teaching you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was very weird. Very, very weird. Time it was just like it just stopped. Changes. <laughs> All right, y'all. So let's go ahead and get out of here. Uh, from D Rock, Sandman, Tiz, Nightlife. Difficult roles often lead to most beautiful destinations. Shoot your shot, go for the win. You might make it. Oh, and we're gonna end on D Rock's <laughs> Rock in a Hard Place. I forgot. Oh, let's do that, oh, man. We're gonna play D Rock's Rock in a Hard Place. Yeah, man, it's check that out, man. we trying to have time. look, we trying to put this show out. At least the first episode out by October. We we finishing up shooting in September, and then we will put it out in October. So please look out for it. It's gonna be. I'm hoping it's gonna be funny as shit for everybody to laugh at. But yeah, please keep an ear out for it. I'm gonna let y'all know as soon as it drop. All right, y'all. So check this clip out. Going out. Peace. I'm chilling, bro. If what happened, I would. Oh, you did. I thought. Let's get it, my guy. I ain't. My head.